Hello everyone, Crydax here. Welcome back to our space exploration playthrough. So, uh, since the last episode, I've improved our nuclear design. I've had two steam, steam turbines per heat exchanger so that we can get a little bit more power generated. The ratio is pretty close to 2 to 1. These generate 10 megawatts and these use 5.8, so it's close. I added two more nuclear reactors and then I made a mess of a circuit combinator deal here. So I'll try to talk you through it. I, it took me quite a while to get it right because I didn't Google anything. I just wanted to figure it out myself, but it took a little while and I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do this. But essentially what I wanted to do is have fuel cells in chests, which I'll have bots deliver those sometime soon. And then each time the steam runs low, which essentially represents stored power, then it will insert one fuel cell into each of these reactors. And so what I ended up doing is I, when the steam runs below 5,000 in both this one and this one, just to kind of balance it out, then it will send a L signal for low. And then that gets multiplied by the uranium fuel cells that are being held by these inserters. So then essentially what that means is only when it's holding when they're holding fuel cells and there's an L, will this send an R output? And we'll talk about what R does in a second. But then it also just sends the L to this combinator. And if L is greater than R, it sends the green light for the inserters to insert. So when green is equal to one, they insert. So that's what happens in one tick. It'll send the green light and these will all insert one of the fuel cells. But then as soon as they do that, L times fuel cells equals one or six or 12 or something like that because I'm inserting multiple cells, but that doesn't matter. It's something bigger than one. And R will be output. Then R gets output to here. And so R times red light is outputting R and this actually wraps back in on itself. Or no, that's sorry, that's a different one. Um, so R times red light outputs R. And then red light essentially is going to say when to stop. So as soon as this red light is on, and we'll explain when the red light is on, then it'll just be multiplying R times one, and then therefore it'll keep outputting R. And you can see that the wires connect up back to the input here. So it'll be reading its own output as an input. And what that means is R will then become a number bigger than one or equal to one even, and then this will no longer be sending the green signal. However, as soon as the red light turns off and becomes zero, then R times zero will output R and no more R's will be input in. And you just saw the whole thing. Um, it just placed one, exactly one cell into all six of these at the same time and then stopped. And so now you can see um, there's no red light. So the red light is there to keep it from continuing to insert. So the red light requires you to either have less than 5.2k or more than 400. That way, in case somehow the steam ran all the way out, this circuit condition would still let them insert. It doesn't, because otherwise it would never reset if it just went lower and we needed to insert more. Um, so essentially this red light will stay on as long as we are still low on steam and that will keep these from inserting more until we have plenty of steam and then the low signal will turn off. And so it's kind of sort of like a latch, uh, an SR latch, I think it's called in computer science world, but it's a little bit different and I'm not, I wasn't sure exactly how to change an SR latch so that this would work the way I want it to. Cause I just want it to insert once and then stop. And so this was the best way I could figure out how to make that happen. We'll see if it uh, hiccups any, but it's worked a few times now. So that took me a while. Um, you can see I've made some more fuel cells. And I think we're getting close. We've got 27. We're getting close to the Covarex beginning to run. And you can see I added four more centrifuges. And if we go to map view, I added some more miners just to make sure we have more than enough uranium. And then... Other than that, I haven't done too much. Uh, I did a few more researches. 
I researched these industrial furnaces, which I want to use at some point. They craft a lot faster, they use a lot more energy, and they can hold, I think it's five modules instead of just two. So we can get a lot more productivity out of these. So at some point we'll want to rebuild all of our ore smelting to use industrial furnaces with beacons. And let's see, crafting speed of four uses about 500 kilowatts, and these are crafting speed of two, and they use a little bit less than 200. So the industrial furnaces are definitely less efficient in terms of their power usage, but you gain back, you know, obviously you gain back something by being able to put more modules in them. Because if I just put, you know, one efficiency module in them, then they'd use less power and still craft at four times the crafting speed. And then I went ahead and ran around the base and fixed up all my science and more expensive recipes um, to have productivity modules in them with beacons. So all of my science is beaconed and productivity to the max. Um, put some productivity and beacons for my engines. I can always copy this. I still have the space that I had before, but 0.8 engines I think is enough for now because I don't need all too much for blue science. The blue science is also beaconed and more compact. It can use a full 1.8, but I'm not probably going to use blue science at this full rate very often, so it'll have a long time to build up, and there's probably hundreds of engines on this red belt all the way there. So, and I took the limits to be a little bigger for all of my science types, so that way I can build up I actually need this one to be bigger. So I can build up a bigger stockpile of science. I just took the limits completely off of red and green. Given what I just saw there, I actually might change this so that we can get some more engines. So I'm going to copy. Let's see. We will just cut all this. And then I will just copy paste this. So that way I know I have enough engines. Although I did need that. And I actually saw four meteors hit a few minutes ago. So we are going to need a fourth one of these, maybe a fifth one, because if one of them misses, I don't want to be having to worry about that. So I think I can just copy this and paste it here. And that should do everything I need it to do. See, now there were six meteors. I don't feel like there were ever six before now. So I'm going to need some more of these buildings. Um, so let's go ahead and have our engines coming out. Oh, it's actually these ones that we want. Like that. And then we'll do some power. And we need two more productivity modules. Why are these not running? Oh, right. I need to output this direction and go up and then over. And I think that's, yeah, that's the same side of the belt. Okay, so that should work. I need two more productivity module threes, and then that should be good. I just grabbed, <laughs> you know, 25,000 copper or something like that. So it's crazy to me how much a stack of module threes costs. Okay, so I have way too many engines now. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of them just take enough to have one stack and then I also want to get rid of these electric engines there we go okay so blue belts is the first thing I want to work on and those will be fairly expensive so I went ahead and beaconed all of my gear production here because you need a lot of gears for blue belts as well and then we need Oops. So let's just look at the recipes, actually. 
Make sure I remember what's in them. I haven't even researched blue belts, so we'll do that first. And we can look in FNEI. Belt. Okay, express transport belts. So we just need gears, red belts, and lubricant. And then probably type express gears, belts, and lubricant, and in advanced circuits for the express splitters. So let's think for a second where we want to construct these. So we've already got gears, belts, and lubricant. Where's the closest for that? It's down here, so it wouldn't be too hard to pipe up here. And then red circuits are nowhere nearby. The, this is the closest, so I might have these come down and across. That should do it. Okay, we'll place these here, and we will try to have these green circuits avoiding as much as we can. And then we'll direct insert. We will insert uh, from the side. This is where my gears will be. And this will be blue, blue, blue. And we'll connect these up. We'll have this go here. We're really starting to fill up every square inch of this base. There we go. That should do it. Connect this. I try to avoid undergrounds when they're not even going to have an empty space between them. Otherwise, I do use undergrounds when it, where I can. Okay, so we've got lubricant. Which, how much is there? Six and a half thousand. I don't think I put a storage tank anywhere, but this should be plenty. Maybe we'll do one storage tank, just to make sure we don't run out. We'll just place that there. Okay, so we're inserting to there, and now we need our belt of gears, which I guess is going to have to be up here, because I needed space for the lubricant. And then the gears will go here, with the splitter. And I will prioritize left, because otherwise we get this swingy. If we prioritize right, then it'll make all the blue belts it can. And then we'll completely run out of red belts. And then it will finally start bouncing back and forth. Better to prioritize the red belts being made first. And then once those are all full, then the gears will move on to blue belts. Okay, and now we just need the red circuits, and we can be done with that. Red circuits go this way. Perfect. Okay, now where am I going to put these is the question. Maybe... I will put them here. And then I will just power from above. And since these are blue belts and we'll use them eventually, we'll just go with a ton of stacks for when we need them. Though this will take quite a while to saturate. So... We will also want a recycling for these um, red belts here. So what I'm going to do is put a circuit here, and it'll only insert if red belts are less than 100. And so this way, we can just take off the limits, and then I can place all my red belts into here. And we will even have a requester chest that we'll be placing in. And this will request red belts from storage. So whenever I have a bunch of red belts, I'll just plop them in a storage container anywhere. 
they'll automatically be delivered to here, which will then go in here to be used for my blue belts. So that's a, a nice easy way to recycle things rather than always carrying them back to where they belong. And these are not crafting because I messed something up with the red. One corner. There we go. And that should do it. Okay. There we go. And then I might do the same thing here. This will only insert if transport belts are less than 100. Take off the limit. Put in all my belts. So now we are using quite a bit. Oh, I probably should actually keep some belts on me for now. And we'll let this use a full, full red belt. So I may actually have to copy this, turn it around, flip it, and paste here. And then we can split. And this will produce probably all the gears I will ever need. Yeah, that can use a full red belt. Which, I'm currently a little short on iron. I never set up a second belt. We will at some point. I'm wondering if this is enough. I mean, one blue belt requires 32 iron, so a stack of blue belts is 3,000 iron. So that'll take this 100 seconds per stack. Yeah, that's fast enough. We'll, we'll build it up over time. Because I don't want to do industrial furnaces right now. I want to work on utility science and logistics robots first, and then we can think about industrial science and industri or industrial furnaces. And we will have enough power because of our wonderful bonuses. Is there a reason this isn't running full time? I think it's because I actually have a few too many. Yeah, I can use up to 30.5 iron. So let's just go check on our Kovarex. You can see that we are still running all of our steam turbines. Still have five more in each of these chests, so that should last a while. Because of the neighbor bonuses, when all six of these start up, we end up getting way more than six times eight gigajoules worth. I think I did the math. This one has three neighbors, so it's worth four. This one has two neighbors, so it's worth three. Same with this one. So these three are worth 10. These three are worth 10. So we end up with 20 fuel cell, even though we're only using six reactors. So 20 times eight is 160. So when all six get placed in, that's 160 gigajoules right there. And then as we add more, we actually don't get a ton more efficiency because the average efficiency of each of these is 3.3 .3, or three and a third. And if we add more and more and more, we approach getting closer and closer to four on each of them because it's only ever the ones on the ends that are worth three. So if we did another two, then the four in the middle would all be worth four. And then we'd have 3.5 average. And so the average would keep getting closer and closer to 4, but it would never be above 4. So we only get marginal gains. I'd probably just copy-paste this whole design before I extended more nuclear reactors. Because I, I already don't have enough heat pumps to use all the power from this. My heat pumps, I only have 32. So those heat pumps can only handle 32 or 320 megawatts right now. And our Kovarex is getting closer. We're at 31. I'm excited to see that start running. I had to change this to a strong box because I had so much uranium-238 that it stopped running. So I'm hoping we'll get to Kovarex before this uh, happens. And I just realized I forgot to put a circuit condition on this. We will want this to only run when 238 is less than 9,000. We'll just put it that way for now so it won't stop. But once Cobra X gets going, we'll change that. Okay, so utility science is the next big project. I might as well research it. 
oh, and beautiful, we can get our other inserter types. I should have done that a while ago. Because now you can see if I click on an inserter, we can make them extra long. And now we can change them to any angle we want. So the possibilities are endless. Uh, utility signs. Okay, so we need to research that. Utility. Need to research robotics first. And we also need to research low density structure and then utility science pack. So I'd like to create one per second. So we'll add recipe science. And we will put one per second. And we will use productivity modules everywhere we can get them. So we'll have four productivity in these and then 0.46 processing units per second. So my modules currently, the setup I have going for modules is producing, I believe a maximum of 1.6 about. I increased the speed of it a little bit. It won't quite get there because I'm not producing the full 24 green circuits. But I think I will just use the blue chips from this. I can copy paste this whole setup if I need to later up here to have more blue chips. Uh, but for now, I think I'll just use the blue chips I'm already producing. And then we need low density structure, which it looks like there's two recipes for later. We get a cheaper, cheaper one, but we have this one available to us soon. And then flying robot frames, which use battery, electric engine, electronic circuits. Okay. So we will put productivities in all of this. So we'll use a lot less raw materials. Okay. So all together, that's only two steel, three and a half copper. That's not too bad. Three and a half plastic. The electric engines, I'm already producing that many. Though the electric engines use regular engines which are going to blue science. So let's make sure we have enough to handle all of that. So we're producing 1.5 and I think I'm using 0.8. So we have an excess of 0.7 to go into these, which also have productivity. So 0.7 will end up making more than 0.7. So after it's all said and done, we will have more than enough electric engines. Batteries, I only need a half per second. I think I might already be producing that. Uh, actually, no, this can only handle 0.25. So I'll get a few more, a few more batteries going. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so batteries we want. I've really blocked myself in here. I think I'm going to remove this and then we'll make a few more. I'd like to use this beacon actually, so I'm going to move this overflow valve so we can be out of the way here. I should not have deleted this. I just lost a lot of sulfuric acid by doing that. We'll put that there. Okay, it'll build back up. It's not that expensive. And so now we want one, two, three. We can take advantage of those beacons. And then battery, battery, battery sulfuric acid for all these and we will use 90 degree sometimes you have to change the drop tile rather than the pickup tile otherwise it'll start grabbing out of the beacons which I think I may have mentioned this before bothers me oh so much I don't understand why inserters can even grab modules out of beacons in the first place I I can't think of one time I've ever needed that I mean, I know there could be cases where someone might want it, 
but it's definitely not normally what you would want. And what am I looking for? Productivity. Okay, so that can handle plenty, and that will also go towards our flying robots and go towards, we'll make one more, maybe two more. And then this can go here, overload. That is also overloaded, shoot. So this one needs to go one down. Two down. There we go. Okay. I just want to make sure I have plenty. It's not that hard to add a couple more right now. Okay, there we go. And then we just need to hook this up to the sulfuric acid. And now we've got plenty of batteries, probably forever. We'll keep one stack on our person. Okay, so batteries are figured out. We've already got steel, we've got copper, we've got electric engines. I might just make circuits on site and I'll, I will bust in stone to make the glass. And that can help us make the circuits as well. So then we'll need sand. I'm going to make this. We'll try our first industrial furnace, just for fun. And then the sand will be made in a pulverizer. And the pulverizer will have productivity modules. Oh, interesting. Those look the same, but they're different because this one's a pulverizer. And I can add productivity to that, and then I can add productivity to this. You can see that reduced the stone we need way down. So that'll be great. Although we are going to need to use some efficiency beacons, I do not want 120, 130 megawatts to produce all this. Okay, so stone, batteries, electric engines circuits. Okay, so we need stone, copper, and then plastic's the only one I've ignored so far. Plastic, I think, so I improved my plastic production as well, off screen, just a little bit. I made sure it was all beaconed. So between the two of these, I should be getting enough. Let's see, that's making seven, and these require three, these require three. So I'm using most of that seven if I'm getting all my modules running. So I might want to make more plastic. So I think I will do that. I'll make some more plastic up here. We'll utilize this. I'm out of probably glass, I'm gonna guess, for these chemical plants. Yep. So I'll make a little bit more plastic just to make sure that if everything's running, we don't run out. Where's my glass? Down here. Make a few more chemical plants. The coal is here. Actually, we'll have it like this. So chemical plants, we need this petroleum. So we'll just run it like this. One, two, three. Three more plastics. We can do this. I'm just gonna assume I'm running enough petroleum. I don't know for sure that I am, but we'll see. And then we'll go undergrounds so that we can do long inserters. And then this will be our plastic for low density structures. We'll make sure we've got our productivity here. That will make six per second. That's overkill, but that should do it. So we've got copper. 
I'd rather make the science down closer to where we use the science. So I might try to get everything bust in this direction. We've already got stone here. Although this build is going to be pretty big. So let's look at that first. So let's assume I'm beaconing with eight factories per beacon. So we've got 0.125 beacons per factory. And then we're going to add speed modules to bring this down, ideally below eight. Because once this is brought below eight, it's pretty easy to just put it all around one beacon. So I actually don't even need three. I just need two of the speed modules. And then we'll put the rest, control click, on efficiency. And so we'll do the same thing here for the low density structure. We will put in the beacon speed modules to get down to eight. There we go. And the rest efficiency. Same thing for robot frames. Although robot frames, I want to overproduce a little bit. Not a whole lot. Um, let's actually overproduce by... Well, this is only 0.16 per second. So I actually want to double that, at least. Let me check FNEI real quick. Logistics bot requires one frame per robot. So we'll definitely want enough frames to build up logistics bots. I think one per second is probably way too much. I could probably handle one per five seconds even. So that's 0.25. So if I can get this up to 0.4. So we'll do 200%, 230%, something like that. 4, so that'll give us some leftover robot frames to use for robots. And then we'll do what we were just talking about. We'll speed them up so that we go down to 8. And then the rest, efficiency modules. Now for industrial furnaces, I'm actually not sure how many beacons we can get per furnace. So can I handcraft a few? I can. And then we'll see kind of how they fit together. And for a pulverizer, we only want to use one pulverizer. So, so beacon by factory one, one, zero. We'll set that as the default, at least for now. And wow, okay. Even just one speed module compensates for most of the speed loss. And then we can just do the rest efficiency. I think in this case, I can probably do efficiency two rather than efficiency three. Okay, so let's check on these industrial furnaces, see how many we can fit around one module, or beacon. So if our beacon's here, then I can get one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so I can get six to one beacon, rather than eight of the other types of three by three factories. So here, we will change the beacon by factory to 1 sixth. And then we will set that as the default. That's a lot of decimals, maybe too many. I'm going to remove a few just so that it's shorter. I think being accurate to these thousandths place is good enough, although I'll add one more just so we maybe will have less rounding errors that way. Uh, okay, so we want to have ideally six, under six of them. So two speed and the rest efficiency should do it. So this is really handy, as you can see, to set up your Helmod so that your designs look better, they fit better, and you can more easily set them up. And overall, we're using 25 megawatts for the one utility science per second, which is much better. And that even counts the beacon, the kilowatts that the beacons take. Although I'm not sure if it's counting that as the full 200 or the 65.9 that it's showing. Ideally, it's smart enough to know that you can't have part of a beacon and it rounds up, but you never really know. So we'll pin that and then this is what we're shooting for. Okay, so we're going to have one, two, three chunks of assembling machines that are about this size right here. And then we're going to have one chunk of industrial furnaces. So I can probably fit all that right here. I'm not going to worry about module fours and fives and six. You know, if this was Bob's modules, I'd have them all in a row. But I'm pretty sure module fours require all sorts of crazy space tech 
And at that point, I can just have robots fly things around. I'm going to get some concrete to fill in this corner, and then we'll start busing everything over there and create our utility science. So concrete, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 more. I think 2,000 should be enough for this area. I guess we'll see. We'll go up and over. And deconstruct. I'll give myself some more nanobots. Yeah, nanobots are pretty dang good. I'd be... I'd be sad to play without them. I get used to the the benefits that they have, but they are a li they they definitely make the game easier. Okay, so we need stone which we have right here, which is beautiful. We have stone, we have batteries. We have steel running right here. It's kind of the the end of our steel line, so we may not get as much as we want if everything else is running fully, but we want to improve our steel output. That'll be fine. Now I should double check. That is going to be a maximum of a half belt of steel because the full two lane isn't coming, but that, sh that should be okay. We only need three steel per second for all of this. Oh, it's the purple science that's soaking up all the steel right now. Looks like my rails... I'm getting sidetracked a little, but it looks like my rails are not producing fully because they're out of steel. So, I just need more steel. We can deal with that later. Okay, so we've got... I wish you could see the summary of the ingredients. Wow, we're going to need 116 productivity modules. I should grab these then, because I'm going to need them so that they can start building back up. But it doesn't tell me all the ingredients right here. So we've got stone, we've got steel, we've got batteries. We need... I'm going to make the green chips here, I think, because they're nowhere nearby. I guess I could take a few of these. I need the blue chips anyway, so maybe I'll just do that. So we will output priority left, because we want blue chips to go to science first. And then we will meet that with green chips, which will also output priority right. I'm only going to need 1.2 per second, so it will take just a tiny bit away from my module production, but not very much. Okay, there we go. And we'll have this come down and over. So now I've got the blue chips green chips. Glass will come from stone. Okay, let's just check them off as we go. So we've got that. The sand comes from that. We've got steel, battery, electric engines. That's what we need. Electric engines, which need to be routed up. I'm just going to go straight to the left of this heat shielding. left and we'll go up like this underground I'm gonna use undergrounds for all of this to use as little space as possible um, let's see we'll do that that way underground and up and there's electric engines Okay, so we've got everything we need for this. Plastic. And copper. So plastic and copper will be it. Looks like we're using all of our red chips, actually. This produces 2.2. These use 1.25, so I have an extra one left over for these which use let's see this needs up to 0 0.381 furnaces huh so we actually don't have enough red chips for full purple science production on that so we may need to improve that at some point currently steel is the bottleneck so 
I'm not going to worry about it, but if we want lots of purple science at some point, we'll have to fix that. So I need copper and plastic to be on a belt. And we will probably run it through here. I'd like to take copper from, I think, this line. Because this line is a different line of copper than the one that goes to modules. So it's more likely to have copper left over. So this one right here is good. I'll just steal that and run it this way. And then we need to bring that plastic down that I'm making up here. Which, unfortunately, I'm just going to throw it on this plastic line which yeah I don't have to worry about lanes here so I can just do this and then we'll go underground like that and we'll have this plastic come down and then we can take the plastic from here Bring the copper over like this. And there we go. So now we just hook this up to here, output priority left. Because we do want plastic to go to our science first. I think that should do it. Should be more than enough plastic for everything. And there we go. Okay. So now we can start setting up our designs. So I'll worry about glass in a second. Let's start with the assembling machines. I'm going to need some more of these. So I need some more electric engines, which I can just pick up from the belt. Okay, so we have, I'm going to make it out in empty space and then we'll move it once we know what we're doing here. So for the final science, we have three ingredients and one output. So we can actually use, if I'm not mistaken, we can use the same design we used for electric furnaces here. Because we can have... I'll need to change it a little, well, no, because this actually, yeah, this wouldn't work, because there's only one inserter inputting into these, so we'll come up with something different. Now that we have the new inserters, I can actually think of a couple things. We can literally just have both belts like this, and then these four can go there and I can extend super long inserters like that. So that might just be the easiest way to do it. Can I think of a better way? Um, maybe it's better to just have the beacon in the middle and do something like this. And then we'll output on one of the lanes. Need to grab some more underbell, underground belts while I think. Uh, do I have blues yet? Yeah, I am almost full on blues. So I will go ahead and get some stacks of blue belts and begin using those instead of reds. Uh, we don't have many splitters because they're last. That's fine. Okay. I don't need these regular inserters. I should get rid of those. So. We only need one of these to output, and that'll be the one with signs. 
So now we just need to input from both belts and output onto one. Let's think how to do this. Well, input from that one. Input from that one. So now we're inputting on both. And then we need to output onto this belt. And we reach one farther. That'll do it. And then we need to do the same for this guy. So input from that. Input from this one. And then we're placing onto the left side here. Okay. And I think we can just copy paste this right here. And that should do it. Ironically, that won't work for these other two designs because they have four inputs each. But I will actually change all of these undergrounds. And this is a design I can use for anything with three inputs in the future. So we'll put that in here. We'll name it three input. Okay. So we've got that. Now we need the four input version, which I wonder if I can actually still make this work. Can I do something like this? And then this. And I'll change these out. It's so hard to see. I need a substation. That will help me a lot. Okay. So we have to change the ones that we're outputting to be inputting. Oh, there we go, and there. Okay, so these two, actually, they can just be regular long inserters, right? No, they need to be one longer. Okay, so those are inputting now. Wait, we already had input from that belt. I already have inputs from both belts, that's right. So we don't need to change inputs. We just need to change where the output goes. So these eight inserters are fine. Okay, so we just need to output onto this belt. So I will do this and do an extra long inserter to there. We'll do that, we'll do that. And then we can do the same thing here, extra long but we'll need to make that one longer to pick up. And then we'll just make sure they're all placing on the right side to be consistent. And then we can copy that and... Oh, it won't be the same. It actually will be the same, but mirrored. I wonder if I can copy it, flip it, and then see if that works. So that's placing, that's placing from that one, that one. This needs to pick up from this building. It was picking up from the wrong one. So these are picking up from these two assemblers. These are picking up from the top two. I got that wrong here too. This needs to pick up one higher. There we go. Okay. All right, and we will also copy this guy. So this one oops, will be for input. So we'll be able to use this pretty liberally for things that have three inputs or four inputs. And that's, of course, assuming everything fits on, you know, one half of a blue belt in terms of items per second. So then we'll erase this, delete all that. and get this all going. Okay, so we need the stone. I'm actually gonna process that here. Now let's see. We need our five furnaces. 
So we'll start here. Two, three. And then we need our beacon. And then two more furnaces like this. And then I actually want the pulverizer to just be in this corner. Like that. Which I will need to craft. And then we will just have the stone come in here. Mini loader should be fine on both counts. So that's only 10.4. And we can load in from one side like this, and then we'll output onto the other. And each of these is only going to need about two sand per second. So one of these fast inserters should be fine. Output onto the bottom side of the belt. So these need to be close inserters. There we go. Should probably leave a space for power. Okay, and the stone needs to come up. And there we go. And this beacon we decided was going to be seven efficiencies. Oh wait, we needed six efficiencies and two speeds to match the industrial furnaces. So six efficiencies and two speeds. And there's the glass that we need. That's only 9.5. Seem to have made a mistake. And it should be giving me even more than that, because this claims with just one speed module 3 in my beacon, that would have been good enough. So what? Why is that only 9.5? And 2.4. Three sand from one stone. Hmm. I wonder if I had the beacon settings wrong in here. Oh yeah, it has four beacons affecting one factory. That needs to be a one. So then we need... Okay, I see now. So it looks like we're gonna need three speed modules to bring it down to one. Yeah, we would need 1.1 if we only have two speed modules. Okay, so always check your beacon settings. That's fine. We'll use a little bit more power. I don't love it because it makes these a lot more power hungry, but and it makes them faster than I need them to be. But that's fine. The, the actual power per crafting speed is still going to be similar. If you divide the max consumption by the crafting speed, you get the like kilowatts per speed. And when you switch out speed and efficiency, that does go up, meaning you use more energy per craft, but it doesn't go up by a ton because the crafting speed helps compensate for the extra energy. Okay, so now we have glass and we will have that reversed out like this. And then that won't get used till the next one. So this first one, we need circuits, engines, batteries, steel. So we'll put these on a belt together. Oops. Well, now I'm holding some things I don't want to hold, but that's okay. Okay, so there's... There we go. And then we need battery and green circuit to be on the same. So we will do one of these. And then green circuits. have something like this green circuits we want to be going down like this we'll actually just have batteries 
out. Of course, they're on the wrong side of the belt. There we go. Okay. So then those four will run through the four input blueprint. So four input. I think we'll just do this and then we'll go up to the right for the other one. Okay, so then this needs to actually be down more and we'll come in like this. There we go. And this one's already ready. And we'll come out, down, and then do an underground. That should do it. Get everything powered up. And this is for, let's see, robot frames. And we need efficiency or productivity like that. We'll see if this works. I haven't even tested this yet, I guess. Oh, right, I need this uh, to have two and six. Two and six. And there's the point four that I want. They craft very slowly, individually. It's a 20 second craft time. But it at least appears that the inputs are all working. Let's see if the outputs are all working. I can just make that a straight belt. Looks to be good. They're all running for their second craft, so. Awesome, okay, so we got that done. And then we need the four input again. This time it's gonna have steel, copper, glass, plastic. So we'll put this next to the glass with enough space to pipe in the other things. And then we'll use our three input. We'll try to use our space kind of efficiently here. We'll just put that in right there. And I need a few more green factories. Definitely need more fast inserters, some more undergrounds. And we're almost there. And unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to call it an episode after I get this automated and run down to our science labs. We'll at least get that far. Okay, and this one needed five and three in terms of modules. One, two, three. And this one needed six and two. Six and two. And I'll go grab a few more productivity. This is low density structure. And this is utility science. Okay. Power everywhere. Power, power. Okay, that should do it. And I need the glass, copper, steel, and plastic to be on my two lines. So glass and steel can be here like this. And then we need the copper and plastic which are already on a line together, so that makes it easy. We'll just make these undergrounds. Route this over and underground. And we'll see if that gets it going. And those will output onto this belt. Don't need to waste an underground there. 
And then we need low density structure, robot frames, and blue chips. So we will bring up the robot frames. Those will connect the low density structure. Which it seems like this one's not running. Is it just because I don't have steel? Yeah, I just don't have enough steel. So we'll fix that sooner or later. And then we need the blue chips. Which I think are going to be easier coming in from the right side, actually. Uh, this is messed up. Those are connected, and I don't want them to be. So we'll do that, and then we'll do this. And then run up the blue chips. Okay, we can go underground. Perfect. And then we're set to output everything onto the far top side of this belt. So I just realized my mistake, because this is the single input. It needs to be coming in from the other side. Um, is there a way I can fix this? Not nicely, because I didn't even leave myself one space. So I think what we'll do... Yeah, it's not pretty, but we'll come up, we'll go across. I don't need to delete that starter. And we'll just switch the direction of these undergrounds. And we need to be on the bottom side with these blue chips. Probably just wasted a thousand plastic. We'll uh, get these all placed so we use a few less. And then we'll be outputting here, and then we'll be on the top side, so we can do that, reverse it. And this will be our yellow signs. Not beautiful, but it will work. And this simply needs to go underground. And we should be running. Amazing. That feels so good. This is complicated stuff. And that will get us our yellow science, which we need to run down. And over here. Might as well put the chest in the same place. We'll limit that to a single layer for now. And then we will need to join in on the top side of this purple line. Oh wow, it crafts a lot at once. Five at once. Okay. So it'll look really slow, but it'll spit out quite a few at once. Okay, so we finally have utility science. And that means we can research logistics. Now, I know logistics bots actually could have been researched a long time ago. Maybe I should have done that, but you can only get the passive provider and storage chests, which really, for logistics, you need these guys, the buffer requesters, mainly the requesters and the actives, because um, without requester chests, it really only serves to... Um, serves to keep you stocked up and help the, the bots carry things away from your inventory, which maybe would have been helpful to do before now, but this is good enough. So uh, I think this is going to be the end of this episode, and in the next episode, we will get our logistics robots up and running and put robo ports everywhere, and then we can work on getting industrial furnaces and improving our smelting setups for all the different types of ore. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, or if I missed anything in this video. Sometimes I find little mistakes that I made in between episodes and I think how how difficult it must have been for you to watch that. So please let me know if you see those things in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Okay.